Hi, this is Desiree Rush with SLP Talk. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I use Seesaw in speech therapy for my students with their home learning program. Okay, so you're going to open up Seesaw and this is what it's going to look like when you are in the journal page. This is just a sample class that I created just for training purposes, so it's not a real class. But you're going to see your journal page, and what you're going to want to do is create an activity. So you're going to click over to this activity section here, and I'm going to show you how to create an activity from something that you already own. You don't even need to buy it, so you're going to go to something that you may have purchased off of Teachers Pay Teachers, or you may have saved already. Um, Say so you just bought it and you downloaded it, so I downloaded, downloaded the category sticks. I'm going to go to the page that I want. Now, mind you, the category sticks are designed, I purposely picked this one because it's not designed to be a PDF that the kids use as a worksheet or anything like that. It's designed to be a physical item. So let me show you the picture here so you'll make more sense for you. Um, so these are what I typically use them for. I put them on paint stirs and I use them to be interactive with the kids. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it and then on Seesaw. So I'm going to pick the page that I want. I may want initially for kids to learn about categories and just instructionally and go through them. But right now, I'm going to go to this page here in which I'm having them um, practice exclusion. So which one does not belong? I'm going to hit print and save as PDF. And then under pages though, I just want page 11. That's the page that we were on. Okay. And then I'm going to save. I'm going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to say, Exclusion number one, because I, there are several different pieces there. I'm going to hit save. And then when I go back to Seesaw, remember I'm on their activities page, I'm going to add an activity and I'm going to assign an activity. Now for this, I'm going to create my own. So these are different activities I already have saved, but I'm going to show you how to create your own activity. So you create an activity. And for this one, say we're going to do um, category. Okay. And add a template for student responses. This is where I'm going to upload what I just saved, that page that I saved. Select from computer. And let's go to my desktop. And here it is. So I'm going to open that. And this is what my students are going to complete. I'm going to hit check. And then here's where I'm going to type my student instructions. Now, for your student instructions, I want my kids to record their thinking as well. So I'm going to have them use the microphone. I'm going to show you, though, how to put those cool little icons in your instructions because we all like our picture prompts. So I know that if I do mic colon colon, it's going to create a microphone. Oops. Tell them press microphone. Um, however, what I would do as my cheat sheet is I don't remember them all. So what I do is I simply open up a new window and I search Seesaw icons. And then you'll see a bunch of them come up. Click on one of them. And then I'll give you your little cheat sheet so you'll know. So there's no need to remember them all. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me click on it. Make it a little bit larger for you. Here we go. Okay, so you can see for the microphone, how it was colon, mic, colon. So I want them to press the microphone and then using the drawing, oops. Now I just looked to see that that was drawing. Cool. Cross out the item that does not belong in each category. And 
the end of each row, name three additional items that belong to that category. Okay, and then I want them to press, press the check mark, so check, so that they'll submit. assignment. I'm going to save that down here and then you're going to see that assignment in my activity library. So see how it changed my little um, codes into the images there. So press microphone using the drawing tool, cross out the item that does not belong in each category. At the end of each row, name three additional items that belong in the category and I'm going to assign it. So I'm going to assign it to student 11, we'll say. Uh, sorry, let me pick. So I can edit students, choose. So if I want it all, I would check all, or I can choose, say there's certain students that I know are targeting categories. So I would select them, click on that check mark. So if I had more than one um, class, I could do them all at the same time. And let's see little save button is covered by, there we go. Okay. And so then this is how kids are going to do. They're going to assign in and they're going to respond. But I'm going to show you what it looks like when the assignment comes up on their end. So hold that thought. Okay. From a student perspective, they're going to open up and their journal or their activities under the home access page, and they're going to see what's been assigned. So here's our category exclusion activity we just created. We're going to add a response. And then we told them to select the drawing tool, which I can't see because I've covered it up here. Oh no, okay, here we go. So we're gonna select the drawing tool and I'm going to change it to red just because the kids can do that if they'd like. Which one does not belong under animals? Well, we know the potato does not belong, so we're going to make an X there. Which one does not belong in the animals here? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not following the directions. <laughs> we were supposed to hit the mic first. So we hit the microphone, start recording. Which one does not belong? A caterpillar is not an animal. And then I'm going to name three animals. So horse, cow, donkey. So go to clothing. Which one does not belong? Golf tee is not clothing. Which one does not belong? A train is not clothing. Which one does not belong? The sun is not clothing. Name three types of clothing. Shorts, skirt, dress. So get the idea. So they're going to continue to go on, but we're for time's sake going to stop here. So we hit that check mark. The kids can listen and preview what they did if they'd like. Um, you're going to hear what they did here. A caterpillar is not an animal. So you can see, I, you can hear my recording as well. And I'm going to name three animals. So horse, cow, donkey. We're not going to listen to the whole thing, but we're going to hit check again. They're going to hit check which one submit. does not belong. And then it's going to upload to their journal. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, let's see what that looks like on the teacher end. So I'm going to switch back to my teacher account. All right, sign back into my teacher account. So when I go in, see in my inbox, it's going to alert me that student number 11 completed an assignment. So number 11 added an item. I can go to the journal and I can see what 11 did. We already played that, so I'm not gonna hit play again, but if I had not seen it, obviously I would hit play. Then I could comment and say, great job, 11. Um, I love how you determined which item did not belong. You know, we wanna obviously provide that qualitative feedback. So hit post, and then they will see my comment. I also can like their item. They tend to like it if you like their item. 
social media. <laughs> uh, so that's how you're going to see what items they completed. Here's another item that I had assigned that to show you an articulation example. Let me hit play so you can see what happened here. Key, 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 key. Bike, 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 bike. Can, 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 can. So on and so forth. So there's an example of an articulation activity as well. So that is how I use Seesaw to give my students some opportunities for learning at home. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Um, you can uh, reach out to me either through social media at SLP Talk, or you can um, send me an email at Desiree at SLP Talk with Desiree.com. So I look forward to hearing from you and good luck.